Hi everyone, this is Cody W3AMG with BridgeCom Systems. Uh, welcome to BridgeCom University Live. In today's video, we are going to be covering APRS. Uh, we've had a lot of requests for this. Uh, this is going to be a very uh, basic intro to APRS, uh, how you can get the basic setup working uh, so you can start enjoying it. Uh, so before we get into that, uh, let's do a few shout outs here and a couple quick updates. So let's see who we have in the chat today. Let's see. Uh, we have Ed, KJ7DHY. Good morning, Ed. Who else do we have here? Oh. Have uh, Rod, WG4USA. Like the call sign. Have a, uh... oh, John, John Mickler. Good morning, John. Good to have you here. Uh, we have a Tracy, KF0. Oh. Lost your call sign. Jim Carr, good morning, Jim. Good to see you back here on the stream. KK4CNJ. Rick, good morning, Rick. Eric KF0EVP from Colorado. Good morning, Eric. John KI7YRC. Doug W5DKW, good morning, Doug. Scott KE8MXJ from Cleveland, Ohio. Good morning, Scott. George, good morning, George, W7EYN. Carl, KQ, oops, eight, KQ8G. Let's see, Scotty, WS, W4SAF. Let's see, who else do we have here? Susan, AI4VV from Alabama. Chris, W5TXS from Houston, Texas. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, that's what this is all about, being able to learn about radio with one another and help share it with everyone else in ham radio. Uh, so let's go over uh, the different types of APRS, what these radios do, what they don't do, and which radio does what. Uh, so the kind of APRS that we're talking about here is location data. So basically, all these radios that in order to use this would need to have a GPS built in. Uh, now the ones that we sell, they all have GPSs, the Anytone radios. We have the, the 578, I get, we'll go over the handhelds first, the 868, uh, the 878, and then 878 Plus, uh, and then the uh, 878 UV2 Plus, which is the, the new one that just came out. And then the 578s, we have the, the standard uh, 578 tri-band radio here, and then also the Plus version of that that just came out that has the airband receive and, and some other cool features. Um, so let's talk about what they do. So the APRS location data basically takes your GPS location, those coordinates, and if it's a, a transmit, APRS transmit radio, it will transmit that information uh, either to a digipeter to put it on the internet or to a frequency that other radios can receive it. Um, and this is really cool, especially for like search and rescue, uh, because people can actually see where you're located. Um, you know, and you're not going to get into as many sticky situations that way. Uh, but it's also really neat for amateur radio. Uh, if you go to APRS.FI, uh, you can actually see where a lot of people's locations are who are using this. Uh, it's a lot of, lot of fun to play around with. Um, and these radios all will do it to some extent. And we'll, let, let's talk about what they do. So with the, the oldest radio, now this doesn't do a lot in terms of APRS at this point, the 868, uh, it will do digital APRS transmit. Um, so it's going to be able to, on digital, transmit its APRS location data, uh, which is cool. And then we have the 878 and the 878 plus. Uh, they're both the same in terms of the APRS. They will uh, transmit both analog and digital APRS. And then we have the 878 UV2 plus. Uh, this is really neat. So it's able to uh, transmit both analog and digital APRS, just like this one, but it can also receive analog APRS now. It can actually receive that information and display other people's APRS location data. So then in terms of the 578s, we have the older one here, uh, which can transmit both the digital and analog APRS. And then we have the new uh, plus version of that tri-band, of that 578, which can uh, transmit and receive digital and analog APRS, or, or it can transmit digital and analog APRS 
but it can now receive uh, the, the analog APRS as well, just like this radio. Uh, so pretty neat what they're able to do now. Uh, so now that we understand what our radio can do, let's get into it. So in this case today, I'm going to set some of these radios aside here. We don't need every one for what we're doing here. We are going to be using these two. So uh, we've got the 878 UV2 Plus here, as well as the 878 Plus, and we're going to use them to demo the transmitting and the receiving. Uh, so before we get into it, uh, make sure you guys actually sign up for the giveaway. Today, live on this stream, we're going to give away a brand new 878 Plus. Uh, so one of you uh, lucky fellow ham radio operators can win one of these radios today, a brand new one. Uh, so make sure you enter that. Uh, there's links in, in the description here all around the stream. Make sure you enter that giveaway. And you do have to be present to win, so stick around till the end and we will call one of your lucky names. Uh, also, if you're interested in a, in a bigger giveaway, we have the Hot Summer Nights giveaway going on right now. Uh, so over, it's like over 20 some hundred dollars worth of ham radio equipment. I think it's like over $2,400. It's an awesome giveaway. There's just about everything in there. Uh, so it's going to be an awesome giveaway, whoever wins that. So definitely sign up for that. Uh, there's links in the description as well. So let's get into it. So first, I've actually already set this radio up here for transmitting. So as you can probably see, uh, it's actually transmitting from time to time. Now what we're going to go through is on the UV2, we're going to set it up to transmit as well as receive. Just so you can see the whole process, uh, really we're only going to be looking at the receive function on this since this one will be doing the transmitting, but we will be able to see how it's all set up. Um, now the building we're in right now, for some reason, uh, unfortunately, we don't have GPS lock. If we go outside, we can actually get a GPS signal, but this building is pretty bad for signals in the studio, uh, so we don't get GPS in here. So for this radio, I have set it up to manually uh, send out our location coordinates, and I will show you how we did that. Uh, but for those of you outside or you know in a building that's not like this one, you're going to be able to use the GPS. So let's connect up our 878 UV2. So just plug in your programming cable here. Perfect, just like that. Get the radio turned on, plugged in, and we'll jump over to the computer here real quick. And open up your CPS for that radio. So I've got mine here. Now at this point, uh, you want to click on the COM port icon and we'll see, there we go. So just go ahead and read from the radio. Click on the read button, and we will read the other data. And we actually have some show notes in the description. Uh, you probably will want to follow along with these. Uh, they're gonna be great for guiding you through the process. We're gonna be working through the same steps today uh, that you can work through. So uh, we'll show you how it works. I'll go into a little bit more detail with some of the items, uh, but it's going to be the same procedure you can follow along with the stream, or if you want to do it afterwards, uh, follow along with the show notes. You'll have the, the same result. So there we go, read data from radio is complete. Uh, so make sure you do the read first, because if you don't, uh, we tend to have problems with that, uh, with band errors and lots of different things. So we are inside of the radio now. Uh, first thing we want to do is open up optional settings. There we go. And then go to your GPS slash ranging tab and make sure to turn on GPS. Now this is not going to work if your GPS is turned off. Uh, now today for this radio, we're doing it a little bit differently, but as a rule of thumb, make sure your GPS is turned on if you actually want to transmit your location. There we go. And there's one other thing I like to do if it's a brand new radio, which is under the uh, work mode. Just make sure that display mode is set to channel instead of frequency. But uh, we've already used this radio before, so it is perfect. So we can say OK. Now, next, you want to go up to Tool and click on Options. And from here, you want to make sure that GPS, uh, Bluetooth, and APRS, and in this case, this is the 878UV2, you want APRS Receive to be checked as well. Uh, so basically, check all the options that your radio has. Now, most likely, they're going to be checked already. Uh, but I have seen cases that where people, for some reason, maybe it's a code plug they downloaded 
or it just didn't come that way, uh, those options are not checked and the radio has the capability. Uh, so just make sure to check that, you know, the options that your radio has. So in this case, this is what the radio has. So we'll check that. And now at this point, we can open up the APRS tab. Perfect. So we are inside of here. Uh, now there's a lot of different settings here. It can be a little bit confusing. So to, to start off here, we're going to work down from the top. Uh, so the, the manual TX interval, we're going to do this automatically, so we don't want to have that. Now you can set it up uh, to, you know, to transmit manually. You can manually transmit your location. Uh, we're going to cover a very just a basic setup of it, a good starting point. That way you can take it and then go from there. Uh, we're not going to, to sh go over everything today. Uh, that, would, that would take too long with this. Uh, we're going to get you get your feet wet and get you started, and then from there you can make changes. So the APRS auto transmit intervals, we're going to set that to 30. That'll be good for today's video. Okay, and then support for roaming. I uh, don't need to mess with that. Fixed location beacon. Uh, we are going to turn that off. Now what that does is that actually allows you to transmit. A, a specific location that you set. So like we can see down here the coordinates. Uh, we have them here. You could actually set coordinates and then it will transmit that location. So you could, you know, you could transmit a location that's totally different from where you actually are. Um, don't know why you would want to do that, but you could. Or in today's case, for this demo, uh, we are transmitting our actual location through the radio via this method uh, because we don't have GPS. So. Just good to know there, but we're going to leave that off because uh, you probably don't want that. Then APRS data, altitude data, we want that set to feet, uh, unless you prefer meters, that's totally up to you. And then the time, uh, this is going to be how long it stays on the display. Uh, so if we get a, a, if we receive an APRS message, we either want to see it for a very short period of time or a little bit longer. Uh, so for today, we want to make that uh, pretty much as long as possible. In fact, I'm going to set it to 15 seconds. Uh, that way it's going to stay on there for a long time. That way we can actually take a look at it. Perfect. And let's keep going down the list here. So the APRS tone, uh, we want to leave that off. So we're good there. And then let's see. The two call, you want that to be set to APAT81. So APAT81, and then your two call SSID, uh, you want to set that to negative one. And then your call sign, uh, we all know what this is hopefully. So W3, oops, AMG, perfect. And then the SSID, uh, with not, not the uh, two call, the SSID, we want to set that to negative seven, I believe. Verify that real quick. Negative seven for a handheld radio. Uh, now this can this can change based on uh, what kind of radio you're on. But for today, we we're on the handheld. We'll set that to negative seven. Um, then we don't need to mess with these symbols at least for now. You know, if you want to get more into it into this, there's a lot of customization you can do. Uh, but we're just going through the very basics. So we've got that. Now your destination or uh, di digipeter path. Uh, you do want to make sure this is set correctly. Uh, so that should be wide, all uppercase, one, dash one, comma, wide, two, dash one. Uh, that's going to transmit to local digipeters. You know, if you're in a, a, an, an environment that has digipeters, we actually have one set up in the shop, I believe. We'll, we'll find out if that's up and running. Uh, it may or may not be, but if it is, we'll be able to try it out. Uh, I know they were working on that this morning. Um, so. Some places have local digipeters, or you can make one or purchase one, and that allows you to basically, your, trans, your radio will now transmit it to the digipeter, and the digipeter will put it up on the internet. Uh, so that path is correct, but just make sure of that if you want to use digipeters. Then the sending text, uh, that's going to be what we actually send when we send out the location data. Um, so, you know, I could put, for this, we'll just put testing APRS. Um, but if you want to put a message, let's say you needed help, uh, you know, you could put a help message there. If you wanted to put, 
you know, looking for a new ham. I mean, it, you could put anything there. That's your whatever text you're sending out. And let's see, we have the transmit frequency. Um, for that, we want to set that to 144.39000. Perfect. And the transmit delay, uh, we'll set that to 600. Oops. Perfect. Uh, send subtone, we'll leave that off. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. And then this, the DCS, we're just going to set that to uh, D000. And the, the pre-wave time, uh, we're going to set that to 600 as well. Just like that. And transmit power, let's go ahead and set that to turbo. Awesome. Uh, so we've got our sending text. And then you want to set this analog APRS receive to wide. There we go. I believe we are set at this point. Uh, like I said, it can get a lot more complicated, but this is the very basic setup. So we're going to click OK. And yeah, so we should be good here for the most part. Uh, we do need to do a couple things. We need to go into our channel. Our channel list here will go down to where we can create a new channel. Just scroll down here real quick. And we are going to create an analog APRS receive channel. That's going to allow us to actually receive APRS data. There we go. Um, so we'll just name it APRS RX. And the receive frequency. Uh, we want that to be 14439, just like before. And we have no reason to transmit on it, so I'm going to click PTT prohibit. Uh, and that this needs to be an analog channel. Doesn't matter the transmit power. Um, let me see. Perfect. And I believe we want the bandwidth to be wide on there. See, then check APRS RX and APRS mute. So we want APRS RX on here checked. And we also want uh, APRS mute. Let me see here, right down below. So make sure you check both of those. If you don't check the mute, uh, it's going to be very noisy, the channel, uh, until you actually have something come through. So you definitely want that. Um, and I believe you can just leave everything else alone here. Yeah, you should be good. So we're set there. Uh, you do want to add that to a zone, so we'll go over here to zones, and we'll just make an APRS zone. And take this one channel over, APRS receive, just like that, perfect. Now we have a, a section just for the APRS. Great, so we're all set up here. Now we just need to write this information to the radio. So select our COM port and write to radio. Okay, write the other data. And remember folks, we are doing a giveaway. So uh, today, each and every one of you has an opportunity to win a brand new 878 Plus radio. Uh, we're giving one away live on this stream. You do have to be present to win. Uh, so make sure you sign up for that. There's links in the description, links in the stream everywhere. Uh, make sure you get signed up for that because you, you will have to be present to win though. So make sure to stick around uh, until we draw the winner. And even if we draw one, stick around until afterwards uh, because it's possible that that winner isn't here. And in that case, we will draw another one, another winner. So there we go, write data completed. And we, we, are all, we are also going to be taking some questions. So if you have questions, ask them now and uh, we will go over as many as we can. Uh, we can't you know, necessarily get to every single question because there's a lot of questions out there. Uh, but we are going to do our best to cover as many as we can. So we have that information written to the radio now. Uh, so at this point, we have to do a little bit of work on the radio itself, and then we should be ready to rock and roll. So got our radio here. See if we can see that on the screen. Perfect. Move this out of the way we can focus on this radio. Uh, so get from your radio, you want to let's see. go to your menu. And we'll go down to 
make sure the GPS is on first of all, which it should be because we turned it on. It is. Uh, and then go to APRS. And, and just a, a little tip for the menus, the green button is what will enter menus and then the P2 button is what backs you out of menus. And then these go up and down. So APRS, upload type. Um, so that would be analog APRS. Perfect. That's what we would have there. Uh, now it's probably not going to be able to do that just because we don't have a GPS lock. Um, but we'll, we'll set it regardless. That's how you would turn it on. So now at this point, your radio is actually going to transmit APRS. So we also, if we want to receive it, we're going to have to go to that zone we created. There we go. Perfect. So we can see it here. Now when this radio decides to transmit, uh, because we have this radio over here, uh, set up to transmit our fixed location because we don't have a GPS lock in the building. Uh, we can't receive that signal. There we go. It's transmitting. Let's see if we receive it over here. No. Didn't come through this time. We'll see, see if we get that next time. Uh, so when this transmits that data, this should be able to receive it. Give it a second here. I believe they transmit, believe it transmits every 30 seconds. Oh, there we go. See if it, now in the meantime, while we're waiting on that, we can actually go over here to the computer and I want to show you another really cool thing. Um, if you open up a web browser and go to aprs.fi, uh, you can actually look at all of the different people around the area using APRS. Uh, so if you have a Digipeter set up somewhere, you'll be able to uh, see these people who are talking. So we have lots of different people in the local area. Um, you know, you can scroll around. And if you transmit to a Digipeter, it will actually show up on here, which is really cool. Uh, so we can see that here. I'm going to close out of that real quick. Let's see what's going on here. So we are transmitting the signal here. Yep, sending APRS analog data. And it would appear as though this radio is receiving it in some form because uh, we're seeing that we're seeing it. Let me see here. Okay, well, let's have a look at our uh, settings just to make sure we have everything set up correctly. Let's see. I'm going to plug this radio back in here. Make sure we're, we're receiving everything correctly. Okay, so just go ahead and read from the radio. There we go. Awesome. Uh, now it is possible that, in fact, I'm going to, once we have this booted up here, I'm actually going to unplug this real quick. Um, it is possible that we should not have this one set to transmit if we want to receive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that real quick. We'll turn this upload type back to, oh, it looks like it was on none. We'll set it back to none. And see. We'll see if this makes a difference here. But we're not seeing that data. So let's have a look in the menus. So we'll go open up the APRS menu and just verify everything real quick. So we have our uh, APRS auto TX interval set to 30. Uh, more importantly, this is going to be for the receive information. Transmit frequency 14439. The subtone off. 
600, 600 turbo, negative one, negative seven. Okay. Everything is looking good here. We have our, our two call set correctly. A, P, A, T, A, one. A, P, A, T, A, one. Yep, everything is good here. It should display it for, for about 15 seconds. We'll set the wide. Okay, everything looks good on this side. Uh, so let's go over here to the other radio and make sure it is set up to transmit correctly. Open up our older CPS here. And, and it's, a, you know, this is a lot of fun, folks. There's always, you know, always something that comes up. It's like, oh, what happened here? Uh, but it just gives us an opportunity to do some troubleshooting. Uh, you know, there's always a solution, always get this figured out. Uh, now, keep in mind, we don't have GPS in the building. Uh, so we are having to do this slightly, uh, a slightly different way. Uh, but everything we've talked about here uh, does work. And you'll be able to do that with your radio. Let's see, granted, you have uh, GPS nearby. Okay, oops. Okay. I'm just going to close out of all of these. Okay. Here we go. Great. So we've got that radio plugged in and turned on. We'll read from it here real quick. Take a look at what's going on in it in its menus. Okay. So open up the APRS tab. So we have our interval fixed APRS beacon. Auto interval of 30 seconds. So it's transmitting it. That's good. We have our oops. That should be set to west, actually. I believe. Uh, yeah, north and west on those. I don't don't see why that would be a problem. It should display anyway, but that that should be should be changed there. And then let me see what else we have. The tone that's off. That's good. Everything looks good. Here's the call sign. Sending text. It's testing APRS. 144.39, that's what we have. 600 off, 62.5, and turbo. Everything is looking good here. We'll say okay real quick. Uh, make sure, yep, everything looks good here. I'm gonna write this to the radio just so we have that updated information in there real quick. Great, there we go. And in fact, I'm going to turn this radio off and back on just in case that makes a difference. So we have our APRS receive set up on this radio, and then this radio is set up to transmit. So we'll, we'll make sure that's turned on here real quick. Go into the APRS menu. Make sure GPS is turned on, which it is. APRS, upload type. A, yep, we're good to, good to go here. Now we, we aren't getting that GPS lock. Uh, that, that could be could be causing us problems here. Let's see. But we should be able to, to transmit with that fixed location data that we entered. We just got to wait for it to send its message. There we go. Sending. Okay, so it doesn't look like that radio was able to receive it. Uh, 
let's take a look at it one more time here. APRS. In fact, that we, I guess we need to read from it. Because we are, yeah, we're, we're definitely getting something on that frequency. Uh, if, if I switch over to a, a different uh, frequency like the NOAA Weather Channel, uh, when this transmits, we're not going to see uh, this light up. So we'll, we'll wait for that real quick. But it would appear as though it is receiving some kind of signal. We'll just wait for this one to transmit again now that we're, we're on a different frequency. Yep, so it's transmitting and this is not receiving it because we're on a different frequency. So uh, the frequency is correct. This appears to be transmitting. Uh, so as of why it's not displaying the information, uh, not entirely sure. So let's figure it out. Okay, so we got this plugged in. Select the COM port and read from radio real quick. retry didn't want to go through interesting we'll cancel that let's try that again real quick it doesn't didn't look like it's finding the radio read the other data Well, we're not getting a connection to the radio. Let's, let's unplug this here. This radio still thinks it's reading. Let's shut this off here real quick. Plug this back in, see if we can't get this working. Read from radio. There we go. We're, we're working this time. Awesome. So we have our information read. Uh, now we can enter. I want to have a look at the channel uh, because that potentially is where our problems lie. Scroll down here. Uh, let's see. So it shouldn't matter, but I'm going to set both frequencies to the same. Just like this. And analog. We have APRS receive and APRS mute turned on. We'll uncheck that just in case that makes a difference. Uh, we shouldn't be transmitting to it anyway. Um, and this, I believe, should be set to 25 kilohertz. Uh, let's see here. We don't have any tones. Nope. Everything should be good at this point. So let's say OK. I'm going to open up the APRS tab here one more time to make sure everything looks good inside of it. So the intervals are automatic, but that's not a big deal because we're worried about receiving. Analog APRS receive is wide. Great. Yeah, everything should be in good shape at this point. Um, so. Just verify this one more time. We haven't missed anything. APRS receive, APRS mute. Yep, we're in good shape. Let's rewrite this to the radio and see what happens. Here 
There we go. Write data complete. We can see the radios here. We'll wait for this one to transmit. There we go. This radio is definitely receiving that, uh, but as to why it's not displaying it, let's see. And try uh, keeping the radios apart a little bit. See if that makes a difference. Let's see, and it, it is set to transmit on turbo, so you wouldn't think we'd be having troubles here. Um, yeah, it could be a matter of, of the ape, of the GPS. Uh, so we don't have GPS service in this in this building. Uh, we can't get the GPS lock on that radio. Uh, we should be able to receive that that transmitted information. Looks like we are receiving, uh, you know, something but it's not just showing up on the display. So, uh, you know, this procedure is the, the procedure we've used many times and, and this works. So it uh, looks like we have something going on here with this radio. Uh, so we'll have to figure that out. Um, but hopefully you've learned something here. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to, to poke around with this here while we answer some questions and see if we can't get this working. Um, but we, we've got this one transmitting. We can see it transmitting that location data. Uh, you have a, should hopefully have a good understanding of how most of this works now. Uh, it, it is a little bit complicated, uh, but you know, if you simplify it, it's pretty easy to get through the process. Um, so let's go through a few questions and I'm going to keep messing around with this uh, to see, how, if, see if we can get this working. Is there a significant battery drain with GPS enabled all the time? Great question. Um, so there's really not a huge battery drain with GPS enabled. Um, you know, it, obviously it will drain the battery a little bit. Uh, more of that is going to depend on how often you're transmitting. So this radio that's transmitting every, you know, every 30 seconds, that's going to drain the power a lot more than if you have a radio that's transmitting every hour, for example. Um, so not particularly, but there will be a little bit of a drain. Does the handset do roaming like the mobile radio does? So it does actually. That's one of the really cool things with this, uh, the 878UV2 Plus. It will actually roam. So you can set it up for roaming uh, and that way when you're driving down the road, the repeaters you have programmed in, it will automatically switch between whichever one has the, the best signal. What is turbo power? Great question. So turbo power is basically the maximum transmit power. Uh, so you can either have it set to low, medium, high, or turbo. Uh, turbo on these, it's going to be uh, 7 watts on VHF and 6 watts on UHF. Is the 878UV2 able to send slash receive APRS messages as well, or just location data? Great question. Uh, so these just do location data. There's no like actual messaging. Uh, there is a way to do messaging through the Brandmeister network. Uh, I believe we've done a video on that before. But as for actually sending APRS messages, uh, they just do location data. People want to know if you are using a Mac and if you can do these things with a Mac. Uh, so unfortunately, the CPS does not work on a Mac. Um, 
There are a few workarounds. You know, we, we don't really support uh, using it on a Mac or anything like that. Uh, but you may try having a look to see if you, if you want to install like an emulator. I know a lot of people have good luck with Parallels or, or maybe Boot Camp, something like that. Uh, or you could just get yourself a, an inexpensive Windows computer. I personally actually use Apple computers myself. Uh, so I just got myself a Windows computer that's dedicated to radios. Just, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something to run your radios off of. Does DMR have squelch? So DMR, <coughs> excuse me, doesn't exactly have uh, squelch, but it, it basically it, it has a, um, digital works a little bit differently. It's not a traditional analog squelch, but uh, there is that in, in a sense. It's a little bit different. There's, uh, with DMR, instead of having your, you know, setting your, your squelch to like carrier squelch, for example, uh, you're going to have, uh, digital signal works a little bit differently. So instead of, uh, you know, being, you're either in range or you're not, Whereas the analog radio, you know, you can kind of fade out of range. They're just a little bit different in that respect. Let's see. Could you use? Uh, but just, just to follow up on that, these radios do actually have squelch for analog. So if, you, if you're on analog, you can go in and set your analog squelch level, just to, just to clear that up. Could you use APRS Droid paired with the radio to do messaging instead? Uh, that's a good question. So I'm I'm not 100 percent what what that is. Uh, it's possible you could. Not familiar with it. What is the difference between the 878UV and the 878UV2? Sure, so the 878UV uh, and the UV2, uh, so we have them both here, the 878 Plus, UV, UV Plus, and the 878UV2 Plus. Um, so the UV2 is, is probably gonna be your best value for money because uh, it has a 500,000 digital contact list capacity, and the actual list just crossed over 200,000, which is the limit for this radio. Uh, so if you're going to be using your radio for amateur radio and want to use it for a long time, this is definitely going to be the radio that's going to last you. Um, it also has some other cool features like the APRS receive, uh, so you can actually receive APRS location data. Similar question, can you do these kind of things on Linux? Uh, let's see here, great question. Linux. Once again, it, it's not supported. Uh, we don't support Linux for it, Windows only. Uh, there may be, you know, workarounds for Linux as well. Um, you know, emulators, or maybe there's a way you can get it to work on Linux. But uh, as far as, you know, efficiently using it, we only support Windows for it. Do you need to follow step 19 of the show notes to enable DCS to D000 for the RX radio to work? Uh, let me see. I believe we do have that enabled. Um, as for what that exactly does, uh, I'm not super familiar with all of all of the in-depth, uh, you know, technical details of how APRS works. I'm still learning all of that. Um, but this is just a basic overview of what you would need to get started with it. Does the radio act as a TNC when connected to a computer? Um, does it act as a TNC? So I'm, I'm actually not familiar with, with what that is. Uh, you elaborate on what, what exactly you're talking about? Can a hotspot be used as a digipeter or is it totally different hardware? A, so uh, a, a digipeter is a, a form of a kind of like a hotspot. Um, you probably could. I'm, I'm not super familiar with how they're created, uh, but I would definitely have a look online. There's a lot of tutorials out there like on YouTube that will show you how you can either purchase one or make one. Uh, a lot of different, I, I've seen a lot of people do some cool things with them. Uh, as for if you can just use a standalone hotspot, uh, not sure. It may be possible. Uh, we have not done that though. 
see. All right, we have pulled a winner for today's giveaway. Perfect, we have a winner for today's giveaway. So make sure you guys stick around. Uh, we, if this, this winner is not present, we are going to draw another winner. Uh, so some lucky winner has won themselves a brand new 878 Plus radio. Uh, and let's see who it is. Our winner is William Garand, call sign KE7FPB. KE7FPB, William, are you here? See if William is here real quick. It looks like William is here. Is William here? Perfect. We have William in the house. So congratulations to you, William. Uh, you, you've just won yourself a brand new 878 Plus radio. Uh, so you're going to be able to apply this information we learned today. And uh, we'll, we'll post an update in the show notes of, of uh, what we figure out why this wasn't working. Uh, that way, you know, you're not going to go through the process if there's a problem with it. But we have done this before. It has worked before. Uh, so we'll post an update in the show notes to let you guys know uh, exactly why this was not receiving today. So anyway, I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. Uh, this is all a learning process for yourself, for yourself and for me along the way. Uh, you know, sometimes things like this come up, uh, but that's just part of it. We can figure it out and uh, we will figure it out together. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we will see you in the next live stream. Uh, don't forget to sign up for the big or, or for the uh, hot summer nights ham radio giveaway. Uh, it's going on right now. Uh, it's one of the biggest giveaways we've ever done. Uh, it, do, you, do you know the value of that, Dylan? I believe it's over $4,000. Over $4,000 worth of ham radio equipment could be yours. Uh, so don't forget to sign up for that. Uh, it's still going on. You don't want to miss it. So that's it for now. This is Cody, W3AMG73.